Shrek. Yeah. 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 Open in Father God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Save us, loving us. Thank you, Lord, to uh, sharing your word with us this day. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that you give us understanding of what you want us to take away from this message today. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, praise God. <coughs> We have uh, things are getting more exciting in the world. The president was, was assassinated or an attempt to assassinate him. That was foretold. It was the only way that ultimately it'll. Anyway, I'm not sure he's going to make it to the election uh, because there isn't any other way they can win an election unless they get rid of him. Can't do it any other way. So they got to get rid of him. So that's what I've told you before it happened. And it happened, and uh, the guy missed, but the, and it was incidentally, uh, uh, from what I've seen of the layout of the place, I'm not an expert by any means, but it was obvious to me that that was a setup. That was a setup by the government uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, pop them off. And got 15 times here, bad things happened, but, but this was just too obvious to me. I mean, the place, uh, the place where the shooter was on top of, no question about it, it should have been occupied by a regular sniper, one of our own people, on that side of the field. We had known on that side of the field. And it was a perfect spot. And it was a, it was left wide open. And the guy got to his deal. Even after we saw him there, they didn't call him. It, it was, uh, so it just tells you what we're up against. We're up against a corrupt government. And uh, they're not messing around. It's just about, about power. See, when you have no God and put God in your life, you have no uh, uh, higher authority, <coughs> all you got left is power. All you got left to go for is power in, in the world. And that's what they've done. And they don't want their power taken away. So that's the deal. But we'll live with it because the Lord said that that was, that was about to happen. So let's read this now. And this is the about the Great Tribulation, but through spiritual lines. We're going to look at the great tribulation for spiritual eyes. That's in Revelation chapter 13. <clears throat> I have as a preface here, preface, preface here, based uh, from Ecclesiastes 3.18. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God make manifest, that is, make apparent to them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts, B-E-S-T-S, -E for beasts, for created on the same day as the beast. We are beasts. The only difference between them and us is we receive, we're able to receive the Holy Spirit, and the others are not. That's, that's it. Okay. Let's go now to the, the, uh, the, the uh, notes of today, Revelation chapter 13, starting verses 1 through 4. And I, John, that's John the Revelator who wrote the Gospel of John, who was in a trance and up there in heaven at this time. I, John, stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast having seven hearts and saw a, a beast, excuse me, um, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And the sea represents humanity. That's where all humanity is in this, this sea. And uh, a beast is in Greek, a dangerous animal, a venomous wild beast. And that's the Antichrist we're talking about now. Okay. So I'll do this again. And I, a John, stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, that is a uh, rise up out of the sea of humanity, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten horns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy, the name of blasphemy. Now, seven heads and ten horns and uh, ten crowns, that's all beyond me to be able to specify what it is, but what it was all together. All, get, all, all together is an unholy confederation of nations. I'll take, for example, uh, yes, sir, Iran and Russia and China and uh, North Korea. That's the confederation right there. The one holy nation. That's what they form. But there's more involved here. So, well, I just call it an unholy confederation of nations. Rise up and, and the common sense. On his heads, the name of blasphemy. And blasphemy means in the Greek, vilification, 
especially against God, evil speaking. And the word blasphemy now appears in this text, in this Revelation 13. Uh, well, this is the first time it appears. I'm going to start numbering it because it's important how often it appears in this Revelation 13. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion. Uh, what uh, what uh, uh, is kind of interesting, a lion and a bear are both two animals that uh, uh, David had killed when he was a young boy, a shepherd, watching his father's sheep. He talks about them. But we find here that they added to those two, two uh, 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 a lion and a bear, which was uh, a leopard. The leopard is known for its swiftness. Okay. So now we're looking at a composite beast. And we'll read it again now. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. That's very swift. We're talking now about a movement, like a governmental movement. Okay. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and that, that means having Congress crushing a bear. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion. That's a lion roaring, like the propaganda that you guys hear on television and radio, roaring loud and stuff, bad stuff. And the dragon, that Satan, gave him, gave the beast, Satan's power. It says here, and, and, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Gave him, Satan gave him his power. In other words, Satan is a spirit. He lives inside of one person. Okay, he, he is a spirit inside of one person. And I hope you are saying, who is, the, who is the person who most wants to live inside of, in the world today? The President of the United States, the most powerful figure in, in the country. Of course, Biden's weakened it considerably. But nevertheless, that's where you would want to be. If you were saying, you would be the one who had the most power and authority. Right? Okay, his mouth was, uh, it, okay, and it was like a, uh, a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and a lot more. And the dragon has seen even his power, his seat, and great authority. Those three things describe perfectly the office of the President of the United States. Power, his seat, that's position, and great authority. There you are. Number one in the world. Now, that's it. now I'm not predicting anything at this point in time. Saying, this is what the Bible says. We don't know who that beast is. I don't know. I don't think I'm saying that's, that's Biden. I'm not sure about that. And I have a reason for that. I'm going to come to it in a minute. Okay? But most people would say Biden is the beast. Okay? So that's what say. it says here next. And I saw one of his heads, one of his seven heads, he had seven heads, uh, one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. Whoa. Well, that stops us right there. We now know two people that can fit that description. That can fit the description of, of, uh, of Trump having been wounded, okay, near to death because of that wound. Uh, I mean, in, in, in terms of his capability. And we can think that Biden, who all of a sudden turns up sick, uh, all of a sudden again. With a deadly disease called COVID. Who knows? <coughs> Gee. Now, what did I do there? I concluded President Trump. Normally, I would have just gone right ahead with this with the Biden being the bad boy. But President Trump is the good guy from all arm types of He's, uh, listen, the guy, according to what, what uh, is told about him, he's never had a drink in his life. I had a drink of alcohol in his life because of his older brother who was an alcoholic and told him not to end the story. But anyway, that's true. Okay. And uh, he, uh, I can't remember something else that he never do. He's like, you're a man can he do some stuff. I mean, like he did when he was in, when he was in power, that stuff he did was and he did some marvelous, marvelous things, wonderful things. Not uh, magical things, not supernatural things, but really great things. So uh, we just kind of keep an eye on this whole thing. Now, because now I'm starting to change my mind about this, I'm beginning to see, I don't know what's happening, because what if Trump does live 
through this thing, and he takes power, they become exactly the opposite of what he appears to be. Wow, that would be something. Because when he takes power, if he suffers through this and takes power, he's going to be in total control. And we don't want him to be. I wouldn't want him to be. You know, I was listening to his inaugural speech here the other night. He's just half done. I wanted to be there. And I had my attitude toward the future of that negative. Think of Robert at times or whatever. And perhaps you don't know. But, but uh, uh, and who wants to be here because there's some bad thing, all these things. But, but his description of what's, going, what's happening, what's going to happen, is just wonderful. I mean, I'd like, I like to see it happen. But we'll see. We're, we're privileged people. We're on the verge. We have been living through uh, a brand new thing uh, in the Bible, in the universe, actually. A brand new thing. This change now. This change, and the change is happening now. It's not happening in the future. It's going to take 2,000 years to go new thing. It's happening now. Right around us all the time. So, and you have to be careful of what you're doing because everything, because you're being tested as well. Uh, truth as I see it, not as I want it to be. I want it to be that Trump is exactly what he says it is. He's proven it so far. But he, is, and he won't change, and he'll do the right thing, and he'll live, do it, save us all. We'll be a, a big happy family here uh, uh, for a, uh, a year or so now. But I don't think that's going to happen. So with that opening, we go to Revelation chapter 13, verses 5 through 10. We're talking now about the beast. And there was given unto him, this one, this is more important to you now. There was given unto him a speech in the mouth, speaking great things. And that's what we're after. The mouth is a TV set, the radio, the newspapers, all the, the false media. That's all the mouth we're talking about here, which are against us. And there was given unto him <coughs> a mouth, speaking great things, and blasphemies. And then again, his vilification, especially against God, he was speaking. Number two, that's the second time, that's the second time that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that word uh, uh, blasphemy is used in this text so far. And blasphemy, we're going to continue. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. Now, 42 months winds up being three and a half years. Three twelves and one six, 42. Three and a half years. She, there's great tribulation, three and a half years. Wow, how about that? Now let's go back and look at what he said here. And power was given unto him. In the Greek, that is in a sense of ability. It means privilege, force, capacity, token of control, delegated influence, authority was given unto him. Wow. Not to to continue for you two months. It's going to be the great tribulation now we're talking about. We're already in the tribulation period. We're going into the great tribulation period. 
he opened his mouth, that's the beast. He opened his mouth in blasphemy. Third time that's occurring here against God. To blaspheme his name. Fourth time blasphemy occurs here. You see, when a word is occurring in the same passages, something's being four times about blasphemy. That's an ultimate thing. That's the desperation of God. That's a terrible thing to think of against God. That's what's coming. We're about to see. They're going to start crucifying Christians. And I don't mean crucifying. Particularly evangelical Christians, that's you and I. Why? Because evangelical Christians believe in being born again. And our authority is God. And other Christians don't about being Christians, not Western Christians. Who really don't believe in being born again? That is being good people. Now that's a, that's a definite, uh, that's an abuse of the terms of uh, what I said about that. Okay, and he opened his mouth and he blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and none did dwell in heaven, and the angels as well. And it was given unto him, that's the beast, to make war with the saints, and here it is, folks, and to overcome them. Oh. That's your name. We're the saints. And it was given unto him, or talking about the church, which it was, to overcome them. What does that mean, overcome them? It means to subdue them, to conquer them, to prevail over them. He's going to be given power over us. That's part of it. He's blaming us for everything. It's like, it's like when you lift the mouth of you and take over. Country. They would come to you and, with a sword and say, do you, do you believe in Allah and, and uh, not believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Allah? You say, yes, we will. You say, no. <coughs> and, and it talks to you about losing your head. Muslims are <clears throat> waiting to take over. There's no question about that. But we've got some other people who are following first. The Chinese, for example. It's a mess. Okay. And power was given unto, unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And the Lord. And all that dwell upon the earth, I have put it in the heart of the still. Okay. The reason I've said that is because. And we can talk to So we shall have been raptured out of here beforehand. And it says here, and all that sit still, my, my position here, and all that still dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Because we're not going to worship him. We're going to be gone at this point in time. We're going to be raptured out. The Bible says we're not to suffer God's wrath. We're not to suffer tribulation. Okay, I had, but that's the first time that's mentioned. And God, God still dwell upon the earth. Um, shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the land, slain from the foundation of the world. The Bible says that each of our names were written in the book of life. That's the way before. The way before that, that, that we should live in life. But if we don't receive Jesus Christ in our Lord and Savior. I mean, the race of the kingdom of life. Then we live in the book of death, so to speak. But no life anymore. That's how important that salvation message is. Because it has to do with our eternity. This is written before the foundation of the world. Okay, so I worship him. Those names are not written in the book of life of the land slain from the foundation of the world. If 
Great wonders, that's his beast. But how? By employing artificial intelligence, AI. AI can make anything happen. And on television, you can make anything happen for real. AI can now replicate it a, a, a person perfectly, not to every movement. And it, so it, and I, AI can make a, an image of me put up on TV screen and be walking and talking, doing exactly what I normally do. All my appearances, my speech, and everything else. It does it perfectly. But I could be lying through my teeth. You see, they have the capability now of totally uh, uh, disguising themselves. And they do with great wonders so that they make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And they deceive them that still dwell on the earth. Third time is that's mentioned. Third time is mentioned still dwell on the earth. It's still important. Okay. And you see them that still 
healing her by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And of course, to make up just like this guy, except it's much more ominous. Saying to them that you still dwell on the earth, but fourth time. That's right. You don't want to be dwelling on the earth when this stuff is happening. That's the point of it. You don't want to be dwelling, still dwelling on the earth. You want to be gone. You want to be in the rapture. You want to be out of here. Because if you're still going on here four times right here, it's mentioned that that phrase. Still going on here. Not good. Now, by any means, those miracles that you had power to do inside of the beast, saying to them, as to all dwell on here, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, never could have been a gun before. had to wound you by a sword and did live. Gee, that sounds like Trump to me. And he had power to do it, although it also sounds like Biden who will recover. This probably is, I'm guessing it's fake. Uh, he's got a fake COVID. They're sticking a lot of action right now. So they call it fake COVID. They're lying to us all the time. I'll continue to lie to us. I can't believe anything we can say. He had power to give life unto the beast of the beast will speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Close. <coughs> Absolute monarchy. If you don't believe, kill chapter. And it causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, walk in their foreheads, that's inside the foot. Which could have been on that no man might buy or sell, there it is coming, that no man might buy or sell, unless I say he had, unless he had, the mark of the name of the beast, for the number of his, of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. That amounts to six, six, six. So I've broken this down, and the footnote next, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I'll read it without any, any insertion. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what, what you're seeing here is, is that we are six men, uh, the number six, okay? and we are six Spirit, which speaks in the six and soul, six and body, which receives six, six. But when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we ask God to come into our life, and we become six plus one. That's seven. That's seven. And then we become the Spirit, six plus one, equals seven, which is five. And the soul, six plus one, equals seven, which is five. Jesus Christ was a man. He was
It's food for thought for you. Don't accept everything I said is true. I don't know myself. All I know is that this is what I was led to speak. I, mean, I have God moving me. I don't know if you say this. God moves me. I've got in me. No question about it. He, he moves me and it's proof in terms of the revelations that I get. You don't get revelations if you don't have God. Period. Hey. So that's what I've been led to tell you. What have I told this very small group of people here? This. And in fact, I told you this at the end of that. And you saw the uh, uh, you saw the repetition of things happening in this chapter. That's the whole chapter of uh, 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 Revelation 13. You saw the repetition of things happening that were of real interest. Okay? And particularly the one that happened. Well, there was blasphemy, and also there was uh, vegetable growing on the earth. They don't want to be one of them. How do you not become one of them? You receive Jesus Christ as one of the saints. Simple thing. So I'm going to give an offering now. Uh, now I'm going to give a uh, presentation, uh, an invitation for you to come to the Lord today. You become an evangelist just like them. And that's what God said to you all the world to preach the gospel to you. So you become obedient to your salvation. You become an evangelist. Go to all the world to preach the gospel to the preacher. So when I ask you, when I ask you to stand right now, when I ask you to stand, what I'm going to do when I ask you to say the prayer. Now, if you don't want to say the prayer, then we have to say the prayer.
Father God. We send your shot. Your shame. Your love. Into my heart. To be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father. Uh, except for salad, you know, used to get the tidings for us now. And, uh, and some of you are coming along well with the tidings, and others of you just don't understand it. And it's unfortunate for you that you don't understand it, because that's where the blessings lie, in the tidings. You want to take the tidings, the tidings shall Blessings come from God. I mean, that's not all the blessings. But. And Jesus said in uh, Malachi chapter uh, 3, verse 8, this is the end of the Bible, Old Testament. Will a man rob God? So when he says that, <laughs> yeah, pay attention. Will a man rob God? For ye have robbed me. What do you say? Wherein have we robbed thee? And he responded, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Man, God is telling us that. So how important do you think God is uh, tithing this to God? Where he said, if you don't tithe, you're cursed with a curse. Anybody here want to be cursed with a curse from God? in the Bible. You are cursed with a curse for you robbed me even this whole nation. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse. This is a storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, she hath the word of host, if I will not open you the windows of heaven above you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. So God is saying to us, <laughs> He's saying, time. Because what God is doing is this. The Bible says, what's the most important thing to man the regular people in the Bible? The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of <coughs> the love of money is the root of all evil. And what you're doing by holding back your money from God doesn't matter what you're doing. You're robbing God of what he's asking you to do to be obedient to him. And he says, if you don't, you'll be cursed with a curse. I have no idea what that might mean, the consequences of that. But I don't want to even, that's what, uh, it's like saying, there's a, a big truck coming. I think I can make it across the road before it comes. Why not? But I'll give it a shot. No, I'm not doing any gambling with my salvation. I'm obeying God. So what is the tithe then that I want? Well, tithe is historically 10% of your earnings for the week, or a month, a year, or however it goes. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you earned $30, for example, this week, $3 it, and he wants the first, $3 of it goes to God. And $27 you keep for the bill. God is always first. That's another thing. He's always you don't pay all your bills and what's left over is tied. Nope. Don't count. You've got to pay God first. That's putting God first in your life. You see. And if you do that, the Bible says, He will open the windows of heaven. Turn flat and step down. He will open the windows of heaven above you. So that a stream of tides will come down. Blessings will come down upon you that you cannot. Cannot disperse yourself, but to walk through on so many people. It's like they just went around chattering all the time. I don't know what all the blessings are. They'll just bless other people. That's what he's talking about. So, <coughs> so, 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 so
have nothing. You understand? So the basic <coughs> things about God. The basic thing is, if you're earning forty dollars a week, or fifty, or sixty, or a hundred, or a thousand, and you're not tied into God, and you're a Christian, you're a very poor Christian. Because you got a curse coming to you. Maybe want a curse from God. That's meant to scare you. Well, it scares me. I tie. God's provided for me all these years now. When I started tithing, I appreciate it. All right, Father God, may Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for these blessings. Thank you, Lord, what you've done for us and for me. Lord, we ask that you just God bless every person here for more understanding of you, which is the greatest thing for us to have after we receive Jesus.